Do you like women's sports, sports across the gender spectrum? How about you're sick of men's sports? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. On this show, we work to level the sports coverage across the gender spectrum. Welcome to Balance Sports. I'm Hunter. I'm Jules. Let's get into it. Okay, well, welcome back to Balance Sports. I'm Jules. I'm Hunter. First, we're going to start off with a BG check-in. So Brittany Griner uh, this week uh, was testifying in court. Um, I thought one of the really amazing things today, hopefully something that will move forward in a, po- in a positive way, is um, a lot of the people from the team she played for in Russia, the owners, the management, uh, the team doctors, came forward and spoke to Brittany Griner's character, what she meant to the team, what she's done for the community around there. Um I keep battling this thing in my head that says they don't give a mess <laughs> because they're doing all this. But Russia also warned the U.S. that they need to stop these, like, in quotes, futile attempts to make this a political thing, that this has to happen in Russia first. We urge the U.S. authorities not to exploit this sensitive matter affecting the fates of certain individuals, and we advise them to abandon futile attempts to pressure us. This is from a Russian name I'm not going to try to repeat. She pled guilty, for those of you who uh, don't remember, I think a week ago, mm-hmm. um, which, but it's a strategy. It wouldn't have looked good if she didn't. So, yeah, keeping her our thoughts, keeping her front and center. Um, that picture, there's a, pic, there a picture out there, we are not going to show it, um, of her holding um, from the All-Star game where players were wearing her jersey. It's such an impossible situation she's in. Totally. I want to, I'll keep focusing on the positives. I can't pronounce any of these names. This person whose name started with a B called Brittany Griner the heart of their team. This other person whose name started with an R, they um, said Brittany Griner's outstanding ability as a player and personal contributions to strengthening the team's spirits. Awesome stuff. All the things we know about BG, but um, yeah, continue to keep her in our thoughts. Absolutely. Um, Let's move on to... Some hooping on the court. Our new balance sports playoff game. We've been talking about it for weeks now. It's time to just make the final prediction. Let's do it. I feel Let's like though we did it. say the three teams we thought that were going to make the playoffs. So now we just have to fill in where we think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Are you mm-hmm. feeling confident? Are you feeling confident about anyone one through five or one through four? No. Me no. either. Confidence? No. <laughs> I wrote an article for Windsider this week, and I was looking at who all these teams were playing last night. Um, and shock, they all play each other. <laughs> um, for instance, Seattle, though, um, we are third in the standings right now. We play Las Vegas again. We play Chicago, I believe, twice. Um, <laughs> we play Washington again. So we're going to have chances against all these teams who are right there in the standings for all those teams 6 through 11. They play in a lot. Hunter, please explain how the game works. This is how the game works. I'm great at Google Slides, and I created a very simple game where we're just going to be moving the 11. <laughs> the 11 teams that are fighting for the playoffs. Indiana, we loves you. Uh, we may throw a little graphic in somewhere today so you can feel seen, you feel heard, but you're not going to be in the playoffs, sweets. We have a sec- We have a whole indie section because you are not in this portion of today's show. The way our show works is it's realistic. (laughs) Indiana's playoff chances are not. Would you like to go first or shall I? I shall go first. Okay, we are going to start with the number one seed heading into the playoffs. Who's the number one seed? All one game separating each other. Chicago is one game ahead of Las Vegas, one game ahead of Seattle. Who's one game ahead of Connecticut? Who's one game ahead of Washington? I'm going to say the number one seed headed into the playoffs will be the Las Vegas Aces. Wow, shots fired. Number two. Chicago. That would be a great one, too. Number three. The Seattle Storm. Number four. The Washington Mystics. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Oh. Is that Connecticut Sun? Connecticut Sun? Connecticut, Connecticut, Connecticut Sun. Connecticut Sun. I mean, look, I liked what you did there. <laughs> Number five. Washington Mystics. Okay, this is where things get tricky. You have to pick now. Teams six through eight to make the playoffs. Get your glasses, get your boots, and your coat because you're leaving <laughs> three teams out. <laughs> While we're, we can pause here and yeah, say yeah. that Minnesota still has the toughest chances to make the playoff at 30%. 18 at no, 19 out of 21 people that voted on our polls think Minnesota's the most likely team to make the playoffs. Make it make sense, y'all. <laughs> make it make sense. I'm the, we're the same, though. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, 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 okay. So okay. number six, Minnesota. Five. I no, don't want to say that. I'm going to say Dallas. Dallas is currently the sixth seed, and they have the best odds right now to make the playoffs. That's a great selection. Thank you. Next, I'm going to say New York. Wow, New York. Tell us why. You're wrong. <laughs> I think Sabrina and um, Johannes are going to get hot, and I think they're going to. I think they're going to make a push. You heard it here first, folks. We'll see you in three weeks. Take it back. I'm almost positive Atlanta's in the sixth position. Here's the truth. I have no faith in Minnesota. I don't care what anyone says. I have no faith in Minnesota. But then I can't ignore that they've been playing well. So. No. None. (sighs) Zero zilch. That's That's my gut. My gut is like, no, Minnesota will not. Minnesota. For the last seed. (laughs) <laughs> our new show drag them pick them where jules <laughs> shits on a team before choosing them no we all we've all been there i've done it multiple times okay huh all right i'm gonna start out with chicago is my number one i think seattle's coming for the gig mm. seattle two las vegas three I think that get the last game Whoa. we play them in the series is going to make a... We haven't played them all three times, have we? We have to play them again? Yes. So that'll decide the series. I think I could see a very real scenario where we end with the same record and it's going to come down to who has the series win. And I think I like us there. Okay. I'm going to go next with... Oh, gosh. Connecticut and Washington is a close one to me. Oh, gosh. I'm going to go with Connecticut, and then I'm going to say Washington at five. Lana Deladon's been hooping. Ariel mm-hmm. Atkins. I will mention every <laughs> episode until we no longer have a show. <clears throat> Atlanta's doing some new things with their lineup. I like the AD edition. I love that they have Nas Hillman in the starting lineup. They're just going youth, youth, youth. Mm-hmm. Tiffany Hayes has come back. Picked her up on my fantasy squad. She's been getting a lot of good points. You see okay. this? I'm, okay. All right. I dropped you know who. Yeah, I know who. You, uh, she, she, ah. she who will not be named. <laughs> she who shall not be named in this house. <laughs> but she's great for fantasy points. <laughs> um, Dallas, I'm going to take as my seventh seed. Am I going to be a bold-faced lie here and contradict exactly what I said last week, that Minnesota was going to come roaring back? I am not. I'm going to pick Minnesota. I'm going to go Atlanta, Dallas, Minnesota. Uh, The most shocking one to leave off this to me is Los Angeles. I feel like that's a great roster. NECA is good. I feel like you love NECA. I love NECA. I you, love NECA. <laughs> and you were constantly telling me, not NECA? What, you don't believe in What happened? What happened? I need Sylvia to get the playoffs for her last one. Agreed. Agreed. I, it's not that Agreed. I necessarily believe in one more or the other, but right now, Sylvia fans, we ride at dawn. Those are our playoff predictions. Let's get to the ESPYs. So Aaliyah Boston was not invited To the ESPYs. Now, she was nominated, but not invited. Uh, Coach Don Staley had some words. Uh, She should. For ESPN. It feels incredibly disrespectful. She is a Honda Award winner, best collegiate athlete of the year, uh, won a national championship, national player of the year, national defensive player of the year. How is she not invited? How is she not someone that you want to highlight, someone that you want to be a presenter, someone that you just want to put in front of the camera. That's a great point. Uh, If you're ESPN and your goal and objective is to grow the game of sports and to show them on your channel, it just seems crazy that one of the biggest faces and most talented players in basketball right now, I mean, just dominant in every facet of the game. You just mentioned every award she won this year. It's not like over her career. I think she won damn near every award this year. Um, get her there. There's a lot of national women's soccer players who were like, I was nominated for the NSWL player of the year and I, I'm not invited to this. So if I just don't understand it, um, yeah, it looks goofy. ESPN is constantly telling us they care about these things or doing some of this stuff and then has some glaring omissions like this. 
Yeah. Uh, Coach Don Staley said, like, who's in these rooms? And it, that's a really great question of you're, you're not asking the right people. If, if you are the leader of this, the people that you're putting in charge don't have the pulse on the right spot because she should be there. I agree with that. While you were saying it, my thought was Don Staley was on a committee that left NECA Agumake off the Olympics. And it seemed like there were some interesting people in that room as well. And I'll never let that go. I'll <laughs> never. The fact that Candace I'm Parker bitter. The fact that Candace Parker didn't make that in one Olympics, the one where she it was like, make this make sense. I'm the best player in the world. And then NECA was the face of uh, uh, for another day, I'm gonna get heated. <laughs> we will recap um, the SB's fashion. We're here for the fashion. Reporting live from here again. <laughs> Once again, your favorite spot. Maybe we'll dress up for that one. Uh, we'll see what the weather's like. <laughs> uh, well, I did get a new um, overall. I got a shorts overall situation. So <gasps> what color? you know me. Um, it's the brown. It's the Carhartt brown. <laughs> Over the black WNBA? Yeah. I live. Yeah. That'll be my outfit. And a new necklace? And a new necklace. Thanks for noticing. Where's that from? Uh, this is from uh, Seattle, up at the Pikes Pikes oh, cool. uh, place. I like mm-hmm. it. Thank is you. Is it wood? Is it rock? It is wood. It is wood. It is. Um, now I have to read you the whole thing. Koa. It's uh, like a Hawaiian, yeah, uh, type. Oh. Yeah. I if really you would like to sponsor us with your homemade jewelry, like, subscribe, comment. Okay. So as as promised, since we didn't speak of indie, what would you do if you were indie? Cry. <laughs> <laughs> For starters. I'd have a good long cry. I'd have a bottle, not glass, of wine. I would take a bath and I would just say, you know what? Sometimes it don't work out the way you think it's gonna. But there's hope. And then I would start packaging together some deals, reaching out to some teams and saying, I'm making some trades. I'm keeping this really amazing. You obviously can't keep the entire core, but I'm pretty certain Indiana are going to have some good picks in the years to come too because their record is AS. Who is your core? Nalissa Smith is unmovable. Okay. Why? See, last week you were saying Kelsey Mitchell. Perhaps I would want to keep Kelsey as well. I would want to keep Kelsey and Nalissa as my core. Everyone else, maybe Queen as well. But those two for sure. I think it would just depend on what I'm getting back because Kelsey Mitchell, I agree. I think she's one of the best guards in the, in the league, but um, I would entertain an idea where I would trade her for just a Skylar Diggins Smith. Maybe Yeah, we, and I'm only using that example because we talked about it before. Mm -hmm. There would be some situations where I would say, okay, this may be a player for a player or throw in something different. Um, You do have really interesting pieces. I think you can do a lot with, with all their young rookies. Um, Who's in need. I think some of those players are going to start looking more like players that can make, they're obviously players that can make WBA rosters. I think Mm -hmm. these players are going to, these are players that I think could be impact players on other teams. They may not be a starter if they moved and went somewhere else. Just say Lexi Hall. Just say I think they could be the sixth, seventh woman. Destiny Henderson would bring life onto another team's bench. You can't tell me that she wouldn't be, I think, a welcomed addition. Um, to what bench? Wait. Seattle's. I would take her on our bench. Rania. Yeah. We, I mean, have we have a point guard of the future. We have a spot. <laughs> we we got a single point guard on the roster next year. They all gone. They're retiring. Isn't it Piff a uh, point guard as well? Breaking She's news. Guard. <laughs> guard. Um. Yeah. I, I. 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 I don't disagree with you. Destiny would be very exciting here. Trading away all the rookies. I guess I still wonder, like, what was the whole point? Did they really think having this many rookies was going to result in something that they, something productive? I don't, but they have to have some kind of plan for the future. They dropped Bria Hartley and picked up Renaya Davis, who is essentially, who is a rookie um, that wasn't picked up on a roster. That feels like a really pointed move to try to say, we're just giving all the rookies like, hey, other teams, look over here. These rookies are great. Y'all want to trade for maybe, I don't know, a couple of those all-stars, a couple of girls that have been in the league for a little while. I don't know. <laughs> maybe just an idea here or there. Um, I think they're going to go hard in the trade market. And what's bummed me out is I think there was a lot of excitement that this team was so young and new. Maybe mm-hmm. they can scrap out wins. And then just the unfortunate reality of it is when no. you get beaten, <laughs> no, when you get beaten that many times, it's just hard to play with the same 
energy and mindset yeah. and will every, every game. Down. And I feel like we're seeing that. Unfortunately, yeah. with this team, they're young, so the season's long as well. Yeah. Um. Just, I just need some happiness up in there. <laughs> also, Kelsey Mitchell has not been getting me the fantasy points I've needed in the last two weeks. Fortunately for my team, <laughs> we're dominating. Let's move right into Storm news. So Indy lost by 20 points last night to the Seattle Storm. We are rolling. I have, haven't seen a loss in quite a minute. We are in our last 10 games, 8-2. and two. The only team with a better record than us is Chicago at 9-1. and one. I mean. That's pretty great. Or- so if we went 5-3 and three to start, then we won 12 games, 3, carry the 5, 8. Yes. <laughs> Seattle's doing great. Doing great. Would you please highlight another uh, beat reporter, M. Adler, asked a really great question to one Miss Tina Charles. M, love you. I'm big fan over here. Big fan. Now, M pretty much mentioned that Tina was really impressed with Seattle's schemes before coming here when she was playing on different teams. How has that changed or how has Tina gotten more familiar as the time has gone along? And what did Tina say? Tina said, I mean, I love playing basketball. So regardless of what it is, it's just more so the individuals that I'm alongside of, how each of them approach every single practice, caring about every single possession, defensive possession, just seeing how the coaching staff prepares for the game and make sure everyone is readily prepared i think that's the beauty of it i think that's what the main difference is what attracted me to seattle were the players on this team and just their approach and what's known about seattle what's known about seattle what's known about seattle okay if i'm reading between the lines shade i call shade it seems like some other organizations that she's been with she hasn't seen this level of preparedness this level of attention to detail i would agree look it's really well documented right now that phoenix is having some troubles you said it not me (laughs) we all said it you should have seen the results of this poll so the way i did this article um was fans think this team will make the playoffs for this reason and i just i put them in there what you guys thought fans don't think this team will make the playoffs for this reason people went in on phoenix Mm. lots to say the drama the drama the drama so the her leaving there i feel like that's tricky but it does follow a pattern um washington a lot of people talk about coach t and how incredible he is and um it didn't work out for her there unfortunately Mm -hmm. so um you know happy that she found a place that she feels like home maybe Storm fans can start considering what if Tina loves it and wants to stay next year because everyone else is leaving. Yeah. Okay, my prediction is that we win the championship. Oh, no, I think Tina's leaving either way. Where would she go? Atlanta. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think if it would matter if we win or don't win. Um I think if we don't win the championship and everybody leaves, why would Tina say? I agree. Yeah. Um, also, she came here to get a chip. She got the chip. Everybody leaves. Why are you? Again, why is she saying? <laughs> unless unless she feels like people would come here because they because she's here because Jules here as he's you know we have some pieces that are going to stay too, um, and maybe people want to play with them. Tina's <laughs> leaving. Jules said it. I I did didn't I? What do you think of Tina's comments? I'm just going to put it out there. There's been, it's been well documented that the coaching staff is trying to appease Tina. Keep Tina happy. And Tina's trying to appease herself as well. That's not a bad thing. I'm just, there's a lot of factors going into this. Everyone's trying to make Tina happy, including Tina. We are a Tina happy challenge. <laughs> um, that's where we're, we're trying to get. Um, she's a professional. She's great at her craft. Her coming here and saying this is amazing just to me feels like another reason to buy into the fact that we are title contenders. I love that, you know, she was at another organization, was like, this isn't working, came here and was like, good fit, love it, everything you're doing here. So I'm choosing to blindly believe that. What I would like to do is get the Zoom records of Tina week one, week two, and see if this was the same energy if she felt the same way about 
um, Phoenix. It makes me nervous at the idea that she probably did. Was like, oh, this is great, but everything's working. And then pull out the tapes. <laughs> a little fashion moment. Here are Gabby Williams and Sue Bird rocking some 988 shirts. 988 is the new National Suicide Prevention Hotline, uh, which is really great. I just thought this was a really cool thing that Storm does, which is highlight things that, that, that they care about. And so I think it's really great that now 988 is just like a 911. You can plug that in your brain, remember it, and access it when you need it. Yeah, how amazing. I love their continual social consciousness in a ton of different ways. We've talked about it's not just during a Pride Month they do stuff like that. It's just not just during like suicide prevention yeah, weeks. We They're just October. like, yeah, let's so. do this um, because it's important and it matters to us. Let's put the shirt on because it matters to us, not because it's what's comfortable today. Exactly. And what was clean, coach. Exactly. Good shirts. The girls are popping their styling and, of course, celebrating a good cause. Love the new number. Absolutely. Let's listen in on an interview question that I gave Coach a couple games ago about Gabby Williams. Coach, can you speak to what Gabby Williams brings to this team? Like, She doesn't have a lot of stats, but I just feel like she's doing a lot on the court that doesn't necessarily show up. A lot. And, the, and a lot of what she does isn't qualified in the stat sheet. So the deflections or the diving on the loose ball or her rotations and defensively and then offensively her ability to come into transition, get into the paint and find shooters. Like th- those are things sometimes, um, and get the hockey assist sometimes, she doesn't get the assist. Mm-hmm. She's, get, she's passing it and someone else is getting the shot. Like those are things that matter. Um, for us, and obviously for basketball connoisseurs, as, as you guys know, you can you can tell she has a tremendous impact on the game um, on both sides of the floor. Thanks. Gabby does everything. When you watch her play, it's just kind of incredible. And I like the way you phrase the question of when you look at Gabby's stats, not every game would you think that she's had the performance she has watching her in person you see her everywhere on the court defensively her offensive numbers may not stand out so that's why I kind of liked how you phrased the question I thought she answered it beautifully yeah I I mean I figured she would if it wasn't gonna you know grab on her <laughs> it's like really well, she needs some more numbers yeah on her stats do suck she should pick it up she would never um but yeah I was I just think she's I, I want her to always be getting attention and you know teams to know I'm sure they do you know they're studying us uh and so they know she's a problem and it just doesn't always show up and I think that Gabby should be getting all of the praise because she does so much for Seattle I want her to come back. <laughs> Tough defensive assignments. She yeah, um, she's always guarding one of like their biggest players or, or like one of their hardest, uh, the opponent's most challenging defenders, and that says a lot. That says a lot of confidence. That has a lot of confidence from the coaching staff to put her on them. Definitely, I love watching her. Well, I love watching her rebound. She, I feel like, clears people who are way taller than her. So she will bouncy. go above them and grab it. And she's one of those people that I almost. It just like makes a noise when it hits her hand. It's like a pop. (laughs) We have to talk about some bad news now. And that's that you have taken the lead on our season pick them. You had a ridiculous week. Do you want to know what your record was? I do. 16 and 1. Are you kidding me? Out of 17 games, you only chose one wrong. Oh my gosh. And it was that you thought New York would be Las Vegas. Forgive me. Forgive me. Um, I had no idea. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) So now the overall standings are Julia at 56 and 30 and Hunter at 54 and 32. Still, I went 13 and three last week. Very close. Minnesota did me. (laughs) Crushed it last week. Uh, No notes. Okay. Hey. No notes. We're doing great. Can we hear that record again? What's the overall record? 56 and 30 for you. And I am 54 and 32. Two games. Uh, That's those are really positive numbers right there. Absolutely. Um, You almost doubled your wins over your losses. Coming for you. I'm coming for you. Okay. So let's get into pick them. We have the Liberty versus the Sun. 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 The Dream versus the Aces. 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 Fever versus the Sparks. 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 We have the Storm versus the Sky. Storm. Seattle. Yeah. 
I think it's going to be a really close it's game. It's going to be but such a But they beat us game. the first time we played, right? They did. I think we're going to get this one. I think so, too. We've got Liberty versus the Mystics. 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 The Dream versus the Sparks. Dream. Dream. We have the Fever versus the Aces. 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 Connecticut versus Minnesota. Sun. Sun. <laughs> We have the wings versus the sky. 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 We have the storm versus the kryptonite for us, the Mercury. It's the last super Diana Taurasi game. Yeah. Storm. Mercury. Really? I do think that they're going to they drop kind of that one. I think that they? last game, like, I do think that for that last home game, that crowd will be there. And yes, they'll be rooting for Sue, but I think they want to win. <laughs> like, sure. I think that, yeah. Sky versus the Liberty. Sky. Sky. Los Angeles Sparks versus Las Vegas Aces. 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 Wings versus the Fever. Wings. Wings. The Dream versus the Storm. 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 I almost said the Dream. Really? Yeah. I feel like when we've played them, those games have just been weird wonky. Finally, we have the Sun versus the Lynx. Lynx. <sighs> Wow. Uh, I picked two games differently. Let's see if I can make it up. We'd be tied. Okay. All right. So for our last fun five, we're workshopping the names. Okay. Fun five. (laughs) We will be picking superlatives. So the end of the season awards are coming and we wanted to throw some fun ones out there for us as well. So you will have the opportunity to vote for these. This video will be out hopefully Tuesday. Um, And next week we will announced like who wins the superlatives okay 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 so we're each picking three superlatives three superlatives i can't wait first superlative that i'm going to select is best dressed most likely to be slept on love that most likely to break someone's ankles Ooh! i want to do one that is called best basketball face because I famously, when I play sports, t- stick my tongue out in any photo of me. I'm like, <laughs> and there's certain players. Um, Skylar Diggins Smith has a really great basketball face, mm-hmm. not because her face is just like beat for the gods, but um, she is very expressive face, most expressive basketball face, most expressive. I workshopped face. it. I like that it's like clunky. <laughs> the Ride or Die Award, most likely. Oh, that's a good one. To be arrested alongside you. My last one. Oh, I want a fourth. I just thought of a really cute one. Okay, maybe we'll have Wolf. We'll okay. Most entertaining award. Okay, so my bonus. Mm. You wanted a bonus. Best friends. That's my best She's friend. Like, You're my best friend. Like, yes, the like. Known as the WNBA's Hunter and Julia Award, we will be presenting it to whoever y'all vote or best friends. Please make it be Asia and Jackie. We'll yes. fly ourselves out. Best dressed. What is their criteria for best dressed? Fly, swaggy, stylish. Those words right there. If what stands out to you is sweatpants and you like that is it that is you know the moment okay like that's your moment that's your moment vote for it stylish swaggy fly those are the criteria boom next we have most likely to be slept upon this is the player that just doesn't get the recognition that they necessarily should have a player (laughs) who flies under the radar but is consistently doing that thing i love it i love it next most likely to break ankles i mean does it need to You're crossing them up. Who is causing the touching of the floor the most? After that, we have the the clunky award. It is called the most expressive basketball face. Now, don't get it twisted. You should be sending us screenshots of action photos of these players playing. We do have an email address, so you can send that. I'll put it right here. Send it to us. You can send it to us on Instagram. You can email it to us. Uh, We want to see the face. Don't get my words twisted. I need a kind edit on this one. <laughs> Next, we have the Ride or Die Award. This is great. Someone will be getting a t-shirt with this says Ride or Die on it. We need one of those Cricket press machines. <laughs> Cricket, if you want to sponsor us, like some... <laughs> The Ride or Die Award goes to the teammate who you see that is just there for their team. Like they're showing up, they are laughing, always there, shoulder to cry on, whatever it is, like they're there, they're present. They're not, you know what I mean? Like that. That's a great one, ride or die. Consistent. Someone that got your bag. Coach Noel Quinn for me. (laughs) Uh, Most entertaining award. This would go to a player who 
Think of someone who you have heard often this year in the WNBA, but their play doesn't necessarily match this. The most entertaining award to me is going to be who a player who stays in the media's forefront, but maybe not even necessarily playing. An example of this will we have be we have heard a ton about Kennedy Carter this season. She's been in and out of the lineup, hardly even playing. When they do have her in the lineup, they're not playing her a ton of minutes. Kennedy Carter could be a nominee for the most inter- most entertaining award because we hear about her a lot, but she's not hoping. Entertainment. Entertainment factor. And we need those people in the W. Absolutely. Absolutely. Liz yeah. Cambage. And finally. <laughs> we have this a best friends award. Tell us what this is. This dynamic duo, people who you see together a lot. You see them out, you see them laughing, you see them uh making fun TikToks. Like they are the besties. They don't even have to be on the same team, just so we're clear, because that happens. That happens. That happens. And I love that. So who are the pair that you know? are rock solid for each other. And you can feel welcomed, although we know it may be cheating that we remind everyone so much of Kelsey Plum and Asia Wilson. Um, you can nominate them because have you seen their TikToks this week? Yes. Literally, <laughs> we, if we had an award for most entertaining team, house down boots. Kelsey Absolutely. Plum, we've got to talk about this. She just signed a two-year extension with them. Mama, we ain't getting her in Seattle. Correct. Congratulations to Kelsey. All right, for Bound Sports, I'm Hunter. I'm Jules. <laughs> oh well i'll tell you after filming okay sign You're- up for our patreon mm, so funny <clears throat> so funny all them doing Kel- Kel- um, kelsey's not working in the back <laughs> not working cindy colson <laughs> on twitter period is amazing you know what we should call when we do stuff like this like silly shit that's also basketball <laughs> silly I, shit I thought about it <laughs> that video just plays silly shit silly um, shit i want to see that fantasy and then i want to see her matched up with sue First round. I want them to get the seventh seed. That wouldn't happen wouldn't in the happen. scenario I just did. <laughs> You're like, what they I just could get out. the seventh seed. Seattle could get the one seed. Minnesota could get the eight. Her and Sue, first round. She sends Sue's home. She looks at everyone on the camera and she says, y'all will talk about me more. <laughs>